right, everyone. Good evening. It's 7 o'clock, so I will call the meeting to order. It's the initial meeting of the board, uh, so it's an exciting time. And I welcome everyone that's here this evening. I'd like to be begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the traditional land of Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, which is represented by the communities of Saugeen First Nation and Chippewas of Nawash on Cedar First Nation. And we also recognize uh, the Métis people whose history and culture are well represented in Great Moose Counties. Um, we have not received any regrets. And uh, Trustee Long, I believe, is with us on Oh, he hasn't joined yet, so he will be joining us as well. So I would like to begin by um, our reading our moment of reflection. So this week is Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week in Ontario. And while anti-bullying themed activities happen year round in Blue Water District School Board schools and work sites, this week provides an opportunity for students and staff to collectively invite dialogue and promote learning in support of safety and inclusion. Our board's mission is to provide a quality education for every student in a safe, accepting, and caring environment. This is modeled in the daily teachings and leadership in our schools and through the system level work of our trustees and our board staff. I would also like to acknowledge the Student Senate and their commitment this year to prioritizing diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as safe, safe spaces in our schools. Thank you very much. There's an article posted on our board website, uh, homepage, focusing on uh, Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week, and it includes the many board policies and procedures that guide all of our approaches to bullying, prevention, and intervention. And this week, we are also inviting students, staff, families, and others in our communities to share and reshare on social media any acts of kindness witnessed in our schools and work sites. For our moment of reflection, please join me to consider the ways in which we as staff, trustees and students, parents, guardians, and communities can uphold the foundations of a safe, accepting, inclusive, welcoming, and caring education system for all. Oh, 
also knows can declare chair and join me at the head table. But before that, can we um, vote for <coughs> nominations for the position of chair be closed? And everybody voting for that until I know him is perfectly on you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we can vote? Yes. Okay. Everybody in favor? Thank you. Trustee Garrett Long, I he him, is now exiting. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the nomination, uh, Trustee Atkinson, uh, and thank you for your uh, continued support. Um, I will continue to carry out the duties of the chair to the best of my ability. And with each new challenge, I will continue to learn and look to each of you for your thoughtful participation, your responsible governance, and your support. I decided to put my name in uh, forward again because I'm very proud of Blue Water District School Board. Its students, its staff, and the cumulative work that trustees have accomplished over the years to set a positive tone. We will continue to provide solid leadership to Blue Water when we make governance decisions that are guided by our strategic plan and focus on the achievement and well-being of our 18,500 students. <coughs> it is our responsibility and privilege to educate the students in Bruce and Gray counties in schools that are inclusive and accepting of all. I look forward to this Board of Trustees carrying on this very important work and thank you very much. Trustee Morgan, Trustee McComb, 
Trustee uh, Derek Long is now joining. Uh, I would like to uh, declare that Trustee Johnstone has been declared vice chair and can join me as the Right? Oh, we have to vote for the, the, the nominations for clothes. It was moved by. Okay. All in favor? Sorry. Please join me at the head table. And I offer congratulations. And I will get myself on track here. to invite my vote uh, when that one of you occur. Thank you. I, uh, I will do my very best and please uh, let me know if I forget, but I, I will do my best. Thank you. I, I know Bev is also willing to help. Thank you so much. Is now exiting. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for my nominator, Trustee Lutz, and thank you very much in the, the trust that you and in confidence you put in me as your vice chair. I I, I like uh, Trustee Thompson very much. Put our students first, and um, in terms of equity and inclusion and following our strategic plan and although sometimes it can you know and I want to let you know sometimes it can feel very painful when I'm going oh this you need to remain to remain to the motion on the floor and things but it it really is or else we'd be all over the place and we'd be here till 12 o'clock at night and nobody wants to be here till 12 o'clock at night so thank you very much. Three meetings. 
Uh, they were held in the fall. Uh, I think our first one was in October, and then the following two were in November. Is that correct? Very close, yes. So we have a planning meeting in September to talk about the year-end process. Uh, then we would have the presentation of financial statements in November, and then the presentation of management letter and other auditions at the end of November. There is the odd case where you might have a fourth meeting in the spring to designate your external auditor for the year if that came up. And last year there was a training session that was put on in January. Uh, that may have been because all boards had new boards of trustees, so uh, uh, may or may not be something that happens uh, moving forward, but it is um, not a hot uh, trustee Johnstone has put her name forward. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Is there anyone else that's interested? 
interested before we... So the, the question that we'll first look at, we are looking for two people to be part of this committee. One is the main uh, member and one is the alternate. Um, so Trustee Long or Trustee Atkinson, are either of you interested in being the alternate? Um, if not, we'll go, I, go ahead, Trustee Long. I'd be honored to stand as alternate, please. Excellent, thank you so much. So it would um, be, uh, was moved by Trustee John Stone, seconded by Trustee McComb, that the board appoint one trustee and one alternate to the Parent Involvement Committee for a one-year term, and we will be appointing Trustee Atkinson with the alternate of Trustee Long. All in favor? Thank you, that is carried. That is carried. And our uh, next committee is the Supervised Alternative Learning Committee. In this committee, we're looking for two trustees and one alternate trustee interested in sitting on the Supervised Alternative Learning Committee. This is a monthly uh, meeting. Uh, so I would like a mover and seconder that the board, board appoint two trustees and one alternate to the Supervised Alternate Learning, Alternative Learning Committee for a one-year term. Uh, Trustee Craig, Trustee Atkinson. Do, uh, is anyone interested in volunteering for this committee? The Trustee Morgan, Trustee Lewis. Just, let's get who are the current members of this committee. Uh, Trustee McComb and Trustee Morgan. Uh, and this we're looking for two people plus an alternate. Trustee McComb? I've been on the uh, committee a long time and I think I'll step back this term and let somebody else have this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. I would consider it a privilege to be considered as the alternate. Trustee Long, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Long. Is there anyone else that was interested in sitting on this committee? I see none. And we have Trustee Long. Let's put his name forward as the alternate. Is there anyone else that would like that role? I don't see anyone. So I am going to put this motion back on the floor. Uh, moved by Trustee Craig, seconded by Trustee Atkinson, that the board appoint two trustees and one alternate to the Supervised Alternative Learning Committee for a one-year term. Uh, we are appointing Trustee Morgan, Trustee Lutz, and alternate Trustee Long. All in favor? Trustee Long, are you in favor? Indeed. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Thank you everyone, that um, is a not a normal process in our agenda, just an annual one. So this takes us now to the beginning of our usual agenda. Could I have a mover and a seconder that the agenda for the initial meeting of the board of November 21st, 2023 be approved as printed. Trustee McComb, Trustee Morgan. <coughs> All in favor? Trustee Long? Yes, please. Thank you. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest um, on, for anything on this agenda this evening. Trustee Long? Um, well, thank you for coaching me. Uh, I do have a family member that is a, uh, a, 
a uh, ETFO teacher with the board, and I'm not sure whether that that possible uh, settlement is being celebrated. So I just seek your guidance, uh, Chair. You have um, no, you have whether nothing. Or not. You're fine, Trustee Long. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Um, so we're approving a couple of sets of minutes. Uh, I have a mover and seconder that the minutes of the regular meeting of the board of October 17th, 2023 be approved as printed. But I have a mover, Trustee Morgan, seconder. <laughs> Morgan and McCoy. All in favor? Opposed? Trustee Long? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, next, could I have a mover and seconder that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Board meeting of November 7th, 2023 be approved as printed? Could I have a mover, please? Uh, Trustee Richie? Yes, please. Trustee Long? Yes, please. Thank you. I put you down as a seconder. Uh, all in favor? Thank you, that is carried. So Uh, any business arising from the minutes? Trustee Kai Coleman? I noticed that the parents' notice of liability is still not in the minutes, so I'm just bringing that forward. Thank you.
So Dr. Beach comes from a background in trauma-informed practice, and she brought a message with her uh, to share at the Bayshore with all staff that had to do with understanding um, children and students in terms of behaviors they may ex exhibit. And what a few key points she left with us, what really stuck with me was the power of play. So this was one key point that she talked about with all staff, the importance of play for all students and all children. She also talked um, a lot about, with us, um, the difference between entertainment and play. And that the concept of entertaining uh, a child or entertaining a student is different than playing. So we delved into that a little bit. That was very interesting. She also talked um, with us about the power of connection. And I think as educators, we understand that power that of course, when, when we can connect with each other, whether it's students and teachers or staff to staff, we can um, form a relationship that helps us work together in a good way. And so she talked a lot about that power of, um, of building relationship and attachment that happens, which allows learning to foster. She also shared a message with us around it's okay to let students or children sit with their emotions. Adults don't need to step in and fix everything right away. We need to help um, students learn how to deal with emotions and how to deal with feelings, but we don't need to step in and fix it right away, and we can give some space to let kids feel and then help them from there. And she also shared a message of um, how we as the, the, the teaching staff, the support staff of students can help students um, through being kind but firm. So that idea that kindness doesn't always mean yes or it doesn't always mean you're going to get your way, but if we teach and share from a kind, empathetic place, we can have the boundaries and that this will allow for uh, learning and growing to take place. So just uh, thank you for switching that up. We, we just shared a few pictures here on the screen for you to get a sense of what the day looked like uh, at the Bayshore Community Center in Owen Sound. So we had a, a large stage set up on the ice surface, chairs, and then uh, we had people on the on the floor space with us and people uh, in the stands. And uh, it was a it was a wonderful day. Before I turn it over to Superintendent Lefebvre, I'm just going to um, share with you. We are going to continue our work with Dr. Hannah Beach through some online modules that we have purchased for all staff in the district to have access to <coughs> over the next two years. And these modules are ready to go. They can be um, played from any device. They're, they're web-based and they are available to all staff at their own leisure for learning and really digging into the concepts that we talked about that day that on the PD day and also from the book. Um, and it's also available that for uh, principals, for example, to use this at a staff meeting or other professional opportun uh, development opportunities with staff. And these uh, modules are available as of now to our district and we're going to be just uh, rolling that out in the next couple weeks and sharing that opportunity with all of our staff. So I'm going to turn it to, yeah, over to Superintendent Lafayette. So just, um, you know, as, as um, Superintendent Panarazzo was talking, it just reminded me when I read the, uh, Reclaiming Our Students, uh, Dr. Beach's book, and in talking to her, we had an opportunity to meet with her during the day and then afterwards as well. Um, we took her up for a drink, and uh, we had a chance to talk about, um, Again, the, the information within that book, if you, if you read that, it is a good book for parents, grandparents, just stressing the importance, especially as we live in a world where we, we feel so connected with those devices that we have in our hands and in our pockets, and students feel so connected, um, actually um, the importance of the connections that students have with the adults in their lives. Uh, their teachers, um, any staff member within a building, whether it's an EA or principal or vice principal, just that having that connection is so important. Um, and in a way, we've kind of um, 
we've given over to those devices, we've allowed those devices to take on some of the parenting and some of the work that, um, and the, even the work, the mentorship, things like that, that come from us as the adults um, that around, around the students, it's so important. So it's interesting the information that she talks about there, and it really leads in well, the connection piece to uh, Dr. Andrew Campbell's uh, work. Uh, we call him affectionately Dr. ABC. He came to speak, us, speak to us as administrators in August. Um, he is absolutely one of the kindest, most funny, entertaining people in the world. He tells uh, stories, many stories about the work that he's done as an educator for the last 30 years. And he la you laugh, well, you might say he hasn't been teaching for 30 years, but he says, oh, Keith, I do, I just moisturize. So that's what keeps me so young. He is, uh, he is a very entertaining, entertaining man. He tells uh, wonderful stories. Um, and uh, the connection piece is just so important that we are making strong connections as adults with the students that come into our building. And that is, is essentially, it's essentially important in the work that we do to create welcoming and inclusive schools. Uh, but one of the stories that he ends up uh, telling at the very end that really pulls everything together, I think, for us was he talked about, um, I, I did take a selfie there with uh, Dr. with Andrew because my daughter's at Boise and he's a professor at Boise, so I wanted to send her a picture just saying as with one of your props. Anyway, um, so uh, one of the stories that he tells is about a young boy um, who's, uh, who's Hindu uh, and he, he eats um, at home, they eat with their hands a fair bit in, in the house and they, they eat the rice and, and other, other, other things with their hands. And he was always made to feel like that's something he could never do in a school setting. He always has to eat differently, use utensils, or or eat sandwiches and things that don't, you know, that are not the same. Um, and his mom came to um, Andrew at the end of the year and said, you know, by the end of the year, he had created an environment within his class where he felt comfortable eating with his hands. And the way Andrew tells the story, I'm doing, I'm not doing it justice, but I mean, I was crying uh, in the session because the way he told it, just this student felt so happy and so welcome in that environment. And when you think about it, he's all we've allowed him to do is just to eat the way he normally eats. But and it seems like such a simple thing, but it's so powerful. Um, uh, and, and just. The, the stories that Andrew shared, just again emphasizing the importance that we find ways to understand and know the students that we serve, the communities that we serve, we respect them, and um, we create environments where everyone feels welcome and included. So Andrew was fabulous to have at the session. There are a couple of quotes here at the end. Oh, sorry, some of them are a little long, but anyway, we'll just leave those up there for you. Uh, it was a fabulous day. I don't know, Wendy, did you want to close it? Okay. One of my big takeaways from Dr. Beach was the importance of boredom. And for many of us, when we used to ride in the car as kids, for those of us who are older, we didn't have anything to do but look out the window or play games with our siblings or fight in the backseat. Um, <laughs> But the, the importance of, and now we just have kids tend to have a device in front of them all the time. And she talked about that's anxiety inducing because they never get that chance to decompress because they're constantly being stimulated. And so uh, I really liked that comment really resonated with me and the importance of boredom. So, yeah. When your kids are complaining about being bored, it's a good thing. So following the professional activity day, staff were invited to provide feedback and comments were overwhelmingly <coughs> positive about the content of the presentations. Comments like dynamic, inspiring, best speaker I've heard in a long time, one of the better PE days I've been to, great speakers, um, and empowering, or to cite a few of the examples of the words that were chosen uh, in the feedback. One elementary teacher told us, I took notes all day long, and I have read them to friends and family in discussions since the PE day. I have not been enlightened by PD like this in a very long time. It was so much more valuable to be learning about how to help children in life rather than just in the classroom. I also have an anecdote that was shared with me from a principal, one of his tech teachers, a secondary technology teacher, uh, was sitting in the staff and looking really pensive, and he went and spoke with the teacher. 
and he was very excited. He said, I've been thinking about what I learned on last Friday, this was the following week, and he said, I've already thought of three kids that I need to connect with this week. And so that was really impact. I get goosebumps just thinking about that, that the impact of that learning from Friday is now going forward and it's going to have a positive benefit to those kids. Many of the principals that attended the session, they continued the learning when they got back to the school. The week after the PD day was the week that most schools had their staff meetings. And so they were um, using some quotes our team had provided in some presentations to provoke some conversation and reflection among their staff members. And so we had some very positive feedback that the learning continued even once the PD day was over. And that's always exciting for us to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much. That sounds uh, excellent. Are there questions or comments? Trustee Luke? <coughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, I have heard wonderful things about it already from um, those who were in, it, in attendance. So absolutely glowing report. And just a question, I think it's so great that modules are available to staff. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Given how much of this content is valuable to parents and the community, will there be anything available essentially <coughs> to be done by parents or to take home or anything like that? <laughs> Sorry, I know this is a little off track, but thank you. I can, I can start us <coughs> off, uh, and Wendy can jump in um, in terms of PIC, for example, and that parent connection, but definitely, as we were sitting there, even when Wendy and I were sitting in the front listening that day, we said we parents would really, really appreciate hearing this information. So. Uh, um, my team is actually on a call with Hannah Beach, Dr. Hannah Beach today, and we're exploring options around how could we engage with parents and more fully, like do some follow-up with our school staff. So we're exploring some options in that regard. Yeah, I was just gonna say the same thing that I was going to bring to pick in January to discuss the option of bringing Dr. Hannah Beach to speak with parents. It was interesting too how many of our teachers who are parents um, made the comment that not only was the takeaway um, things that they could do with their students in their classroom, but also with their kids at home. Trustee yeah. I just have a comment. Um, the Monday, October the 30th, after your, your PA day, I heard nothing but great things about it. Um, in fact, I think every EA in the building had something to share with me that whole week. And in fact, just today, we were talking about relationships and how it was an impact. This professional activity day was was um, just, they loved it. And, but then it's, they're still absorbing what and sharing what they learned. Um, and they, yeah, so it was very well received. And uh, it's, they're still talking, so that's good. Trustee Long, did you have a question or comment about the presentation? Yes, please. I have a few. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I'm thrilled to hear that uh, there are uh, a lot of this is based on trauma informed practice. Um, the value of uh, play versus entertainment. Um, I, I'm sure uh, I'm glad to hear that uh, the uh, simplistically put the recognition that feelings just are, they are never open to adjudication. We need to feel what we need to feel, and I'm thrilled that we appear to be um, promoting that, uh, yeah, kids can kids can hug their feelings of discomfort, anger, whatever those emotions might be, and they're never open to adjudication. Um, but uh, what I struggle with is uh, when, we, when, when we begin to think of building those, and there is a question coming really soon when we begin to think of building those relationships, and um, especially post-COVID, the challenge of, of uh, staff and students uh, coming into uh, some form of union. It's so tough to do with 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 these challenges of, of you know, accredited teachers in the front of the room, um, endless number of schools in the district with bus drivers in the front of the classroom. 
action and it's just really toxic. And I, I would like, um, I believe this is a pertinent issue to, to offer now, because um, it is related to this. We cannot build connection unless we are together, you know, 170 or 180 days a year, staffed with students. And when we have that dilemma of not getting qualified uh, educators at the front of the room every day, and sadly, bus drivers in so many schools are, are um, driving the bus and then they're, they're, they're leaving a math class and, and they may or may not feel a death and that's got to be so tough on on the uh, the letters of permission that may be the old fashioned term Laurie could give us the, the modern one but you know the letter of permission letting somebody who's not qualified to be in front of the, the classroom and that needs to be done but I just wonder um, can, can we help that dilemma uh, possibly offer the the minister and, and the, the ministry, uh, let's get rid of the cap on 95 days. For, for, uh, I believe it's 45 or 50 that a retired teacher, at uh, least currently, I believe, is past 50. And I, just hope, I, I just hope that is his record. Guys. Here's my question. Um, here's my question. Um, uh, we talked, uh, there was a talk at length about parental development in this discussion, um, about, about professional development. The great dilemma is that PD can also mean parental development, and it, it's tough for great staff members uh, to make up for um, for challenged parenting, and they should not be in, uh, expected to do so. So I, I don't know how we solve that dilemma. Um, of, of how do we develop connections uh, between staff and students when we when we just can't, we don't have enough uh, folks to build those relationships. We can. And do all the trauma informed practice and, and uh, data uh, management we want, but that dilemma of building those relationships by having uh, the teachers uh, with their students on an almost daily basis uh, to not be addressed in some way. Is there a solution? I think I make more of a comment than a solution. We're looking at that actual day of the professional development, so we'll leave your comments to stand. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Trustee Craig? Well, it was clearly a wonderful and very successful day. And it is clear that those presentations aligned very well with the board's goals, also my own personal values. Um, what I'm curious about, though, is where these two presenters came from, not geographically, but um, how were they offered to the board or did the board go out and seek them? Um, is this, uh, and was this an initiative generated from the board, from our administration, um, or was it something the ministry put upon us? Through the chair, I can uh, speak to that. Um, this uh, was something that we, as a senior team, uh, leadership team here at the system level, uh, talked about. This was not, these speakers weren't chosen by the ministry or they weren't, um, you know, they weren't told we will bring these speakers to Blue Water. Uh, in Dr. Hannah Beach's case, I can speak to that. Um, our staff, our clinical manager, our mental health lead, and some of our staff under Melissa's leadership actually uh, read her book because she uses an evidence-informed, research-based approach. And our staff was so impressed with her book, they did a little more research and looked into her materials, the modules that I mentioned, and then we actually formed a, a relationship to you know reach out and speak with Dr. Beach. And after working with her for a little bit, determined we'd like to invite her to Blue Water. So that was um, staff here making a recommendation based on the, the research they had done. And as you may be aware, um, Hugh Morrison, and one of our uh, principal colleagues here in Blue Water, he teaches an Indigenous Education AQ, Additional Qualification course in the district. And one of his uh, speakers, I was a principal in a, um, a Jewish school down in Toronto, and while talking on, and I happened to be on that call, I think, because I was also a special guest in this class online, 
And um, one of the, this principal was speaking to the class, and she brought up the fact that she had Dr. Campbell coming into her class, or into her school, and do some work with them on creating inclusive and welcoming environments. And it was so impactful. And we were so, uh, 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 we were so uh, caught up in what, what she spoke to us about and uh, how powerful this was um, that um, at our ABBA, which is the Association of Blue Water Administrators, so that represents all the administrators in the district, as well as senior team members, a few of us are on that team, uh, we look at the professional development for administrators in the district. And we were aware of Dr. Campbell, so we met with him online. We decided he'd be a perfect fit to come and speak to us at our symposium in August. And when we heard him, we all agreed. We looked at each other and we said, this is the message we need everyone to hear. And it aligned so well with what Anna was talking about in her book, because we had just read it. We thought, this is a perfect fit. And this is the first time Hannah and Andrew had actually met. And uh, what's funny is afterwards we said to them, you know what, you need to do a road show together because you were a perfect fit. Um, it's, just, it's just a wonderful message and it really resonated with everyone. Well, clearly Dr. Beach and Dr. Campbell are to be congratulated, but so are you for having put this together. Any other questions or comments? I just wanted to make one. Oh, go ahead, Trustee Long. Remember, it needs to be about this presentation. Yes, it's a specific presentation. Well, there was a million mention of PD modules for staff. I believe it was teachers. Um, those modules that are being offered, um, are they? is there designated release time for staff? I can consider teachers. I'll, I'll use teachers. Or, um, is, is your designated release time for staff, uh, particularly teachers, to, to uh, experience those modules? Or is that any of your parents? And if you get to that, if you get to find that, do you do? Please do. Is your de designated release time for them to investigate modules? Uh, Trustee Long, we do not at this time have designated uh, release time for to support these modules. Um, we, though, are looking for opportunity to bring these modules to things like future professional development sessions. So when we do have opportunity to work with staff, um, maybe through other um, portfolios, other envelopes, other ways, could we work these modules in to support them? So for example, for bringing in a group of teachers to NTIP, could, because we do have release time for, for a program like NTIP, could we work these modules in? If we're bringing principals together, which we do monthly for principal meetings, could we leverage the modules there, for example? So we're looking for those opportunities. But these modules are a priority. This is a wonderful initiative. Um, the on the PE day, set of a music teacher going to uh, math uh, work or a French teacher going to a, a, a visual art workshop and, uh, that, that, for example, maybe teacher or something best, uh, maybe there'd be situations where they could perform these modules instead of going to a subject specific uh, professional development opportunity. Thoughts on that, please. It is definitely something that we are exploring um, for teachers, that they, this could be an opportunity to choose. We have access to these modules for the next two years, and they are for all staff, not just teachers. So educational assistants, ECEs, staff that work here at the system level, our coaches like it, um, our administrators, it's for everyone. So in saying that, that's exciting, but it does, we're gonna have to do a little bit of planning to figure out you know, how to, how to um, get that opportunity for everybody, but uh, professional development days could be could be definitely in that plan. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm thrilled to hear. Thank you, Trustee Long. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, you were commenting about students being bored and and the technology that's in our hands. I think that message needs to go to a lot of people, not just our students. I think 
we are all guilty of um, not taking time anymore to just be, be bored because there is always something that can take our time, our energy away. So I think it sounds like a, a message many, many people need to hear. I'm glad that there are ways that you're trying to bring this message to our parents. Um, but there's lots we all need to learn. Um, are there any other questions or comments or we'll move on to our next item? Yes, Trustee McComb. I just wanted to thank you for telling us how you found these two wonderful speakers and all the work that went into it before. Thanks. Uh, it was moved by Trustee Ritchie and seconded by Trustee Atkinson that the Blue Water District School Board receive the Professional Activity Day, October 27th, 2023. Report for information. All in favor? Thank you. That is carried. Uh, there are no delegations. May I please vote? May I please vote? Oh, yes. Go ahead. No, I'm, my vote is no. I had a specific question about the modules and I was cut off, so I vote no. Thank you. Uh, and I guess I'm not getting past my question. Okay, thank you. Do you want to ask one more question? I do indeed. Um, then specifically, thank you for mentioning that it's for all staff. Uh, therefore, I'm, I believe I'm hearing uh, the uh, the actual suggest possibly that uh, a, a, an educational assistant um, who who um, sometimes needs to wear a full Kevlar suit to, to to be safe in a classroom that uh, if they are working. I love to say Trustee Long. Trustee Long. I'm going to cut you off on that one because. We, are we were talking about the presentation that staff received on a PD day. So uh, I am going to cut oh. that question off. Um, and we will move on to the next well, agenda item. Point of order, the, the actual scope of modules, and I have a question about the module. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're just going to move on, and we'll perhaps you can ask your module question when you're back. But, that would be more specific to how people are uh, moving forward with it, and we were talking back about the presentation. Um, so we are at reports, Committee of the Whole Board reports. Um, wow. There were two recommendations uh, coming forward from the Committee of the Whole Board held on November 7th. Uh, I'll be the mover on these motions, and I'll be seeking a seconder. First, that the Blue Water, uh, so I'm the mover, but that the Blue Water District School Board approved that Georgian Bay Community School students participate in the Pursuits Program field trips. Call of four winter camp February 13 to 16, 2024, and Algonquin Winter Expedition February 27th to March 1st. Could I have a seconder, please, Trustee Morgan? All in favor? Trustee Long, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next, that the Blue Water District School Board approved that Owen Sound District Secondary School students participate in the field trip France and Spain 2025 from April 18th to 27th, 2025. Moved by myself, seconded by Trustee McComb. All in favor? Thank you, Trustee Long, how do you vote? How about that? We. Oui. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're next is our business committee of the whole board, and I would like to invite, uh, I'm not sure who's presenting this report, Trustee Morgan. Uh, so if you want to present the report, then I'll put the motion on the floor. <coughs> As per your package, oh, sorry, forgot. As per your package, um, we had um, a report on the insurance profile <coughs> overview. Um, 
including the insurance reserve fund. We had early years capital priorities update, St. Edmund's child care. Um, apparently, it was open with a great flourish and um, very well received. Um, we also had a, an update um, from Mr. Bumstead about the new Beavercrest Community School with photos and actual showings of it coming out of the ground, finally, <laughs> to move everybody's excitement. And um, that is my report for the evening for November 7th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll be looking for a mover and a seconder that the Blue Water District School Board received the report of the business committee of the whole board meeting held on November 7th, 2023 for information. Trustee Craig seconded by Trustee McComb. All in favor? Trustee DeLong? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Vice Chair Johnstone to speak to the report from the Committee of the Whole Board in Cameron from November 21st, 2023. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to move it. I will be looking for somebody second that the agenda of November 21st, 2023. The Committee of the Whole Board in Cameron meeting be deemed to meet the legislative requirements for discussion in camera. Can I have a second? Thank you, Trustee Morgan. All in favor? Opposed? And Trustee Long? Yes. Thank you. Next, um, I, I am moving that the Blue Water District School Board ratify the memoranda of settlement with OSSTF Professional Student Service Personnel PSSP District 7 for the period of September 1st, 2022 to August 31st, 2026, pending an agreement and ratification of the central terms between OSSTF and education workers, which represents professional student services personnel, PSSP, <coughs> District 7, and the Ontario Public School Boards Association. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Atkinson. All in favor? And opposed, and Trustee Long. I'll grab that, we. Is that a yes, in favor? I'll grab that, we, yes. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and um, I also would like to note that the annual performance review of the Director of Education has completed as per board policy. And thank you very much, and that is my report. Uh, are there are there any notice of motion this evening? I see none. Our committees with trustee representation. So you were all provided with a form um, with the committees where there are trustee representation on them. Some of which we dealt with tonight as our statutory committees. Uh, if you haven't uh, already done so, please leave your form with uh, Beth this evening, um, and she will collate them, uh, and we will meet shortly and uh, see who's interested in what and how we can most fairly go about doing that. Uh, there are three special education advisory committee representative appointment recommendations as nominated by local associations and agencies. I'm going to put the motion on the floor and then I'll invite Superintendent of Education, Fenner Lipset, to speak to the report. Um, that the Blue Water District School Board appoint Kim Calloway as a member of the Special Education Advisory Committee for the remainder of the 2022-2026 term as nominated by Keystone Youth and Family Services. Could I have a mover, please? Trustee Atkinson, Trustee McComb, and welcome. 
Thank you very much. So you'll see at the top of the report, uh, as per regula Regulation 46497, uh, there's a requirement that members of the Special Education Advisory Committee, known as SEAC, and their alternates must be appointed by uh, the Blue Water District School Board for the term. And uh, at various times throughout that term, there may become a vacancy, which is what has happened in this case. So we need to uh, fill those vacancies, and these are the appointments that are in front of you today for your consideration. Thank you. So we have three of them. One is on the floor. We'll vote on that, and then I will um, put the other two um, on. But it'll be the same explanation. Uh, so the first one is that Blue Water District School Board appoint Kim Calloway as the member of Special Education Advisory Committee the remainder of the 2022-2026 term is nominated by Keystone Youth and Family Services. It was um, moved by Trustee Atkinson, seconded by Trustee McComb. All in favor? Uh, Trustee Long? Yes. Thank you. Uh, secondly, that the Blue Water District School Board, Board appoint Liz Thomas as an alternate member of the Special Education Advisory Committee for the remainder of the 2022-2026 term as nominated by Keystone, Child and Youth and Family Services. Could I have a mover, please? Trustee Craig, Trustee Morgan, all in favor? Trustee Long? Yeah. Thank you. And lastly, the Blue Water District School Board of Point Sarah Mat Madigan as a member of the Special Education Advisory Committee for the remainder of the 2022-2026 term as nominated by Bruce Gray Child and Family Services, Trustee Atkinson, Trustee McComb, all in favor? Thank you, that, oh, Trustee Long? I'll that uh, we, yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, that is carried. <laughs> I would like to invite uh, student trustee Enns to, to present the student center report. District School Board students attended the second annual Unlearn Forum hosted here at the board office. Over the course of the, the two-day event, students discussed issues within their schools and came up with solutions to put in place. From November 5th to 7th, students from JDSS, KDSS, and SDSS traveled to the Ontario Student Leadership Conference in Niagara Falls. It was actually quite similar to the professional development that they were talking about. Dozens of speakers in keynote sessions and smaller workshop sessions talk about all sorts of interesting, um, leadership-minded, um, and, and all sorts of topics um, that really leave you feeling like, inspired and educated and, and really motivated to build school spirit and um, you know, develop as a person. So it's a really great experience. Um, WDCS is going to have a teacher-student buy-in for basketball. OSDSS celebrated Diwali with food, tru food trucks, henna, marigold garlands, and a presenter educating students about the holiday. They also had Hockey Fest and beat their rival school, St. Mary's. <laughs> WDCS also had presentations about Diwali and students made Rangoli with colored rice. All, um, all schools had Remembrance Day ceremonies and activities. KDSS had an assembly about conflicts around the world and how to prevent them. WDCS and KDSS traveled to Cambridge for Kawasa Volleyball. And today, KDSS beat WDCS <laughs> an exhibition hockey game, which Carter uh, did make me add. Winter sports are starting up, and the winter break is in sight. Any questions? Trustee Green. Regarding that first item, the uh, workshops that took place here at the board office, you suggested that we discussed education issues and came up with solutions. Can you give us some examples of both the issues and the solutions? 
Absolutely, yeah. So uh, we worked with Unlearn, which is a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion um, minded company. And um, we discussed all sorts of things. I think some of the main um, items that came up were the uses of, of slurs. Um, in the hallways, a lot of it happens, unfortunately, in, in all schools and in our schools. Um, and so sort of addressing um, how we deal with that. Um, we discussed having more spaces open in our schools. Sometimes the cafeteria is a big, loud, and unfriendly space for some. So um, opening up extra spaces where you can feel a little bit more comfortable um, while eating your lunch and while meeting uh, people and while hanging out with people that are, are like-minded is, is something we thought was really important. Um, I'm not sure if Keith, if, if you would like, or Superintendent Lafave, if you would like to uh, talk to some of that. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we've done with the action, we call them action plans. Each of the schools, all nine secondary schools, came up with action plans, student voice driven. Um, they were then uh, going back to their schools, and the job for them was to set up a meeting with their administrators and, and leadership within the school, and, and meet with them and share those plans and ideas and thoughts. Um, at that point, then they were to take a break, and then come back in a few more days, maybe a week later, to talk about, okay, where do you think these fit within the, um, within the plans for the school, how we can make these better places for students, more safe, more welcoming, more inclusive. Um, so that's been the plan. We actually just sent out a survey the other day, and I was asking student senators about whether they received that or not. Uh, I sent a survey from my department asking them, have you met with your principal? What school are you from? What actions have been taken so far? What are your plans? What suggestions do you have for us moving forward if we were to do this again? So that's where we're at right now in the process. So schools should be working on integrating that student voice into their plans now. Sounds excellent. I wonder if coming out of that, we could have a more substantial report to the board um, that would focus on two or three of the most doable solutions to problems that you came up with. Um, maybe Superintendent Lefebvre can uh, uh, spearhead that because we not only need to hear student voices, and I say particularly at the high school level, um, that's what you're primarily dealing with there. Um, but we need to act on student voices. We need for you to identify problems as you see them and solutions as you perceive them. So maybe Superintendent Kay wants to uh, respond to that suggestion, which involves work by him and others. Just want to uh, query you on on what was what was the 
testimony. Well, I've done the 16, 18 year olds uh, do to, uh, to, to, to affect change in things like world conflicts. And, and I finally say, you inspire me, youngster. You inspire this oldster. You are eloquent. And uh, I look forward to your, uh, to your answer uh, to the question, what was the suggestion? How does a teenager get involved in a positive way of, uh, of think, at least thinking and, and possibly acting upon in a small way um, the conflicts in our world, uh, whether they are those uh, in our immediate area or across the ocean? What was the conclusion? All right, so I can talk to it a little, but I might invite um, a, a, a student senator Snowblen up here. It was his school that, that had this event. I know something that was brought up at the leadership conference was, you know, several organizations talk about hosting fundraisers at our school. Um, War Child Canada was one of the one speakers that spoke. You know, we can run events in our small communities and we can raise money to help uh, help support people around the world. I, I can uh, hand the mic to uh, student trustee or student senator Snowblen. Um, hello everyone. So the complex assembly that we did was at the same assembly as the Remembrance Day. So for Remembrance Day, the main point is never again. And I think it's important to recognize how we can prevent conflict in the future, especially with the younger generation in school. So personally, I did a presentation on Rwanda. I went there in the summer in uh, Africa. In 1994, Rwanda had a genocide in which 800,000 people were killed in three months. So I did a presentation on my perspective, trustee, and how people can show great resilience after facing great evil in what happened there, and what we can do to prevent that in the future. And I tried to relate it, my perspective, to the students of KSS. Thank you very much. Excellent answer. Trustee Martin. Um, I'm very interested in hearing more of what our students have to say rather than having staff present it. We don't hear enough of their voices. I would much rather hear them put together a presentation for us and speak to us, whether it be in a board meeting, a separate meeting, whatsoever. But I, I really don't think it's staff's responsibility. If you have things that you'd like to tell us, then I would appreciate hearing those. Thank you. So if I can just clarify, I think what you're saying, if I've heard it correctly, is when it's, when it's appropriate, when it's a, a student uh, initiative that you're wanting to hear from the students rather than our staff presenting what's happening with us. And you have support for that. And uh, Trustee Ritchie. Yeah, I just wanted to say in question to Trustee Morgan for saying that. I was just waiting for the time to chime in and say that as well. Um, for first, most of you may know I sat over there when I was in high school and I remember feeling feeling like I was left out even though I was here. Um, and I used to wonder, well, what am I doing? What am I doing here? Like I'm observing, right? And but at the same time, they're taking their time to be here as well. So I feel maybe moving forward we should have a spot for all the student senators. And it, um, especially our trustees as well. But I mean um, we also have our senators. I know that they elect trustees or yeah the trustees that sit up here and whatnot, but at the same time I think we all have a fair they should all have a fair shake at saying what they need to say, uh, especially because all the schools are different. Um, I know that you, Ethan, I know you present what the student senators are saying, but maybe there's something else that could be elaborated more, shared more, depending on what's going on in the schools. Um, for myself, because I am the trustee for Saudi First Nation, Nation and uh, Nayashi Ming, um, I'd really like to hear from the student senators that are district and uh, Peninsula Shores specifically. I know we have Indigenous students in other schools as well, but I, really, I would really like to hear um, from the other students. So thank you again for bringing that up. And I, I think, I hope that you're hearing, we all value your voices, all of your voices. So if there's something that comes up at a meeting that you would like to 
um, add a comment or ask a question, uh, please do so. Uh, you know, it won't always be presentations because there's a lot of work to get through, and uh, but but please do that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Trustee Ends. It was um, so. Thank you for the report. Uh, we are to the exciting part of our meeting uh, now, and I would like to invite Superintendent of Business Services and Treasurer uh, Rob Cummings to speak to our financial statements and consolidated financial statements and report. I'll be looking for a mover and a seconder that the Blue Water District School Board received the 2022-2023 financial statements report and the 2022-2023 consolidated financial statements for information. Trustee Morgan, a seconder, Trustee Atkinson, and welcome. Thank you, Chair Thompson. Uh, it's certainly my pleasure this evening to present to you the 22-23 financial statements and summary. Uh, with me this evening is Andrew Lowe, our manager of financial services, who through him and his team worked so diligently, persistently in getting these financial statements prepared and through our audit process. Also with me this evening, you'll be hearing from Senior Manager of EDO Canada, Kevin Trumbull, uh, with his presentation of the audit report that relate to <coughs> have a few moving parts here or see how this works. So I'll cover off a few things. This won't be as detailed as the report that you have in front of you, uh, but all the details in, uh, in meticulous, <laughs> tedious detail are in there in the notes. Uh, but I'm going to go through some of the big things that happened, uh, happened this year. Uh, so as I mentioned, the financial statements are in your package. Um, this is basically an overview. So the information was reviewed and received by the audit committee at their November 13th meeting and included our external auditors. The financial statement package was prepared by staff in accordance with the Financial Administration Act, supplemented by Ontario Ministry Education Minimum Random 2004-012 and Ontario Regulation 395-11 of the Financial Administration Act. We cite these because these are the directives, legislation, and guidance and guidelines uh, by which we present our financial statements across all school boards. You know the saying, I'm going to rip the band-aid off? I'm going to do that right now and make sure this pain gets through quickly. So one of the, one of the additions uh, to this year's uh, accounting and the, the statements is the asset retirement obligation. Uh, so in the statements you'll see them, uh, if you're comparing last year's numbers to last year's statements, you will see a difference. And that is because of asset retirement obligation, or I'll refer to it as ARO, um, with that new legal requirement of removing a tangible capital assets from service, we are required to account for additional expenses related to the asset retirement. So in a nutshell, uh, there's a legal obligation associated with the retirement of tangible capital assets controlled by a government organization. So the retirement of those is basically taking them out of service. So for example, if we have a school and we're shutting down, we need, to, we need to make an estimation of future expense for the demolition of that school in a legally and safe manner, uh, which generally for most older schools includes a cost related to asbestos abatement. Uh, so, that is what took up uh, a great deal of time this year, working through a number of reports through all of our assets, all of our schools and equipment. Uh, and so for us, uh, that was basically the change in, uh, in the expense. So this is a $15 million plus liability for us, um, amortized over the life of the asset going forward. So, as the technical side of it, essentially we carried an extra expense this year, we amortize it for a longer period of time, and uh, it has to do with being more of a fully burdened accounting of our future uh, obligations. <clears throat> and of course, we restated the, the prior, year, prior year in order to maintain that comparability and relevance of our financial statements for the reporting year and for our users.
Financial results reflect Blue Water's commitment to our long-term sustainability and continued focus on student achievement and well-being. Some of the notable uh, financial events from the past year included an increase in elementary and secondary enrollment of 577 students, which led to increased funding uh, and generated increased staffing levels. Uh, with that, there was an increase in salaries and benefits expenses resulting from the vision for ongoing collective bargaining. There's funding and expenses to support learning recovery, re-engagement, enhanced health and safety, and the mental health and well-being of students and staff. We also focused some concentrated efforts to increase our school renewal work in advance of the ministry-imposed spending deadlines. <laughs> there are significant increases to other revenue, including bank interest, donations, and permit rentals. So after the pandemic, uh, a lot of donations have opened up and we've seen a big number come through with donations going forward. Uh, it kind of makes sense. We saw the money supply increase through the pandemic. So, uh, contributions were made to capital, technology, and contingency reserves, allowing for financial flexibility into our future, uh, allow us to respond to uh, any downturns in, uh, in funding coming forward. <coughs> So the results present a stronger financial position to support the board's long-term financial sustainability. Total assets are $13 million to $395 million. Now, this is largely related to the increased capital additions through funding from capital priorities, school condition improvement, and our school renewal. And if you recall, in September, you had a very lengthy report uh, illustrating the, the dollars that were spent in school renewal. And we've talked a little bit about the child cares that have gone in and the capital dollars for that. As per plan, the board continued its commitment to building capital and technology reserves. These financial results have provided the opportunity to contribute $2 million to a capital reserve, $2 million to the technology reserves, as well as add to the general contingency reserve, allowing for the board to fund targeted initiatives set forth in our 23-24 budget and responding to future funding changes. So Blue Water finds itself in a respectable financial position for over the sixth straight year and is well positioned. Uh, for our future. Uh, certainly, uh, we've come a long way since the years when things were rough and uh, went through a lot of work to get ourselves into this position. Consolidated Statement of Financial Position or Balance Sheet is found in your package. This is um, an abbreviated version of it um, and it shows a year over year change uh, for comparative purposes. So, financial position continues to improve. Building on the momentum of prior years, effective management, strong financial responsibility has moved us over the years to a surplus position of $14 million. The net increase in non-financial assets is again related to the $24 million in capital additions through funding from capital priorities and scope mission improvement. Our financial assets remain relatively stable over the year, some ups and downs in the two different areas. Uh, also changes to financial liabilities included the recognition of the ARO, and a sub subsequent reevaluation, as well as increases to the deferred capital contributions. Uh, this is our consolidated statement of operations. And it shows the revenues, expenses, and annual surplus uh, compared to the approved budget. Um, also, it has the uh, amortization of ARO in there. So it's important to note that the financial statement purposes results are compared to our original budget. So not our revised estimates. So in December, January, we look at our revised estimates based on the new enrollment. But when we look at our financial statements, we have to go all the way back to the June budget. So that's what they get compared to. Um, biggest driver to the increase in revenue, again, this year is the enrollment above and beyond the projections in the budget. Uh, this enrollment led to increased staffing and programming. Uh, other revenue increases in, from the budget included the benchmark increases anticipation of ongoing labor negotiations, fuel escalator in response to fuel costs, uh, PPFs, or Priority Partnership Fund Investments. So these are funding programs from the ministry that are announced after you approve the budget. So they come in throughout the year and re require everyone to move very quickly to get those programs in place. Also, again, as I mentioned, significant increases to donations, permit revenue, and some of the additional expense changes included increased staffing expenses driven by the enrollment, uh, increased needs in special education resulting in more DAs and corresponding supply costs and significant inflationary increases in software, transportation, utilities, and maintenance contracts. So 
all that being said, led to about an $8.9 million surplus, which has been added to our so just some charts makes it a little bit easier for, for all of this to be talking about with this. But, uh, some of the things we like to look at is we want to make sure our funding dollars are getting through to our schools and our students. So we like to show this administration cost as a percentage of our expenses. So uh, we're still sitting in the 2.7% range of the funding that we get goes into administration. Uh, administration includes uh, groups like accounting, human resources, corporate services, payroll, purchasing, and some like uh, so this is a very respectable number, uh, specifically in the public service. We're among the leaders with the uh, with the, group. the other one I like to talk about is some of the things that we have less control over, like our unsupported debt. Unsupported debt simply means debt that there's not a specific funding source from the ministry on. So we fund this from outside of what we call an administration envelope. So you've heard the groups that I that we fund through administration. Um, we don't fund fully up to that amount. We save some of that amendment and we'll pay for the unsupported debt going forward. Uh, and as you can see, we're starting to move that down. Uh, we're looking forward we're, to uh, the upcoming years where more drops off, but right now we're at 5.6 million. <laughs> and it's been actually quite rewarding watching this drop from I think 13.9 million when I, when I first reported on financials. So in review, it is clear to, to you as well as to myself, our board's short-term financial position has improved uh, by successfully navigating through the school year and responding positively to our enrollment changes. Again, uh, many past decisions and current year decisions proactively led to a long-term financial sustainable outlook. Uh, we're in very good shape going forward and we're certainly sufficient to support future initiatives coming forward. Uh, so just a couple other little charts here, just takeaways, I mean, giving you a three-year trend, our total budget is steadily improving, our funding for student is going up each year, our reserve number is also improving. Uh, if you recall in the 23-24 budget, we took some money out of reserves to help fund for coaching and different programming areas, some educational assistance as well, and uh, as well we're looking at that funding some of our technology. Uh, there's the unsupported debt number in there as well. Of course, uh, funding that goes towards the students is the inverse of the previous slide I showed you, so 97% uh, goes to our students. And again, these are kind of supportive stats. Um, it's because we have these as well, that's why we're in a better position. So see our utilization of school space, or our capacity, we're up at the 88% mark, a little bit above that this year. Enrollment growth, of course, year over year has been improving. Uh, the minus 181 in 2021 was a choice of students not to start, not to be at school during the pandemic, so a lot of homeschools and a lot of junior kindergartens chose not to uh, show up for school right here. Uh, secondary enrollment, elementary enrollment is strong going forward. And then of course our OTG is our capacity so you see some minor changes there. Our new facilities, over the last three years, we have the Egremont Child Care, uh, the new GBCS in Meaford, the Spruce Street Child Care as well in Durham. And of course, we talked earlier this year about school facility investment covering around 11 million, and we're looking at about another 11.1, 11.2 million for next summer uh, as we frantically try to spend this money uh, before the ministry comes in and puts the deadline on us. And, Uh, so Kevin Treble, our senior manager from BDO, is here. Um, would there be any questions prior to the audit report to the financial stages? Trustees have any questions about the financial statements? Yeah, please. Go ahead, Trustee Ron. <coughs> Did I, uh, mostly gratitude here. Did I hear correctly, through the chair, did I hear correctly that we recently had a surplus of, as Austin Powers was saying, his best boys, ten million dollars with a nine point seven million surplus. I threw the chair as an eight point nine million dollar surplus for this past year. Wow, that's fantastic. And uh, if, assuming our budget is near a qu uh, quarter billion dollars, two hundred fifty mil, that that's a close to 
from any of the ballpark, that's close to a, a, a three, four percent surplus, yes, if we're a quarter billion uh, uh, annual budget. Through the chair, we're doing all right. <laughs> wow, bravo, bravo. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure who's speaking, my, my audios aren't great, but uh, Rob and crew, uh, Thank you. Uh, you brought us back from the brink of going belly up, and bravo, bravo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trustee Long. Any other questions? I see none. Thank you. Um, as Rob mentioned, I am a Senior Manager at Video Canada in Hanover, and I'm a part of the external audit team. Uh, so I'm here to present the audit report that gets attached to the, the water financial statements. Um, so I'll just go through the report um, and just touch on some of the highlights. It's the same kind of report you would have seen in previous years' financial statements. Uh, so the very first paragraph is the opinion paragraph. So uh, this is BDO's opinion. Uh, so we have audited the financial statements of Blue Water District School Board. Uh, which comprise the Consolidated Statement of Financial Position as at August 31st, 2023, Consolidated Statement of Operations, Changes in Net Debt and Cash Flows for the Year Then Ended. In our opinion, the Consolidated Financial Statements of the Blue Letter District School Board as at for the year ended August 31st, 2023 are prepared in all material respects in accordance with the basis of accounting described in Note 1 of the Consolidated Financial Statements. So what that means, it's a clean audit opinion there's nothing that, that we could put our, our report, or attach, attach our report to, um, and the statements are prepared in accordance with uh, the guidelines outlined by the ministry. Um, the, base, the next section is the basis for our opinion. So we've conducted our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. Uh, we are independent of the Water District School Board. It's a very important part of being part of the external audit team that we're independent. And we believe that the audit evidence we've obtained through our audit is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Um, further on, on the report there, it goes on to the responsibilities of management and those charged with governance. Management is responsible for the preparation of the consolidated financial statements uh, and for such internal control as management determines necessary to enable the preparation of the statements that are free of material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. So just, just to highlight that, that BDO issues an audit opinion on the financial statements and assists with the financial state preparation, but ultimately it's management making the, the accounting uh, decisions and, and responsible for, for the statements. Uh, those charged with governance, in this case is the audit committee, is responsible for overseeing the whole financial reporting process throughout the year. On the next page, it goes through the audit responsibility for the audit of, of financial statements. So as auditors responsible to obtain reasonable assurance, whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Uh, reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it's not a guarantee that an audit conducted um, appropriately will always detect a material misstatement. Um, it goes on to say some of the procedures we uh, specifically did along with a lot of other stuff. Um, we did present all this to the audit committee the last, uh, about a week ago, um, and we did to go in further detail about the audit there. Uh, I'd like to thank Rob, Andrew, and their staff for assistance during the audit. Um, as Rob mentioned, there was a new um, ARO accounting standard on his end. Um, on our end, there was new Canadian auditing standards. Um, so all in all, there's a lot more work required by both the water staff and the external audit team, and uh, the ministry didn't give us any more uh, days to get the audit completed, so I'm, I'm really happy that we got it got it all approved in time there and submitted. And that's all I had to present. Do trustees have any questions about our audit? Yes, please. Go ahead, Trustee Long. Uh, uh, you mentioned generally, uh, generally accepted auditing standard. And uh, one of three or four of those that that we use to um, ensure um, uniformity, consistency. Uh, obviously, the team was doing something really well in reaching these generally accepted auditing standards. What are one or two of those related to the, the ideas of uniformity and consistency that that let blue water, that let blue water, 
so that we can celebrate at uh, you know, so we have to push out a surplus. I'm not sure quite how to answer that. So generally accepted auditing standards are the standards that BDO has to follow when we audit audit the Blue Water District School Board's finances. Uh, may, maybe you're alluding to internal controls or something that the Blue Water School Board has in place that allows us to complete our audit? Yeah, so for example, um, when we were up the, on the brink of, of financial deep concerns, we must have had some inconsistent um, and non-uniform uh, things happening, um, what did we change so that there there was consistency and uniformity um, so that, that we reached the standards instead of uh, not reaching them, for example, and I'm specifically thinking of the idea of uh, uniformity, consistency, um, what, what have we, what has the team decided were the inconsistent or un-uniform things that were improved to lead us towards, to lead us away from the brink of financial disaster towards um, just, that just three and a half percent from. Trustee Long, I think you're mixing up two things. The audit is a process that auditors conduct to their standards, and our financial statements are managed internally by our business SO and the team that surrounds them. I will let uh, Superintendent Cummings speak, but. They're not related. Uh, the BDO is reporting on what they're finding when they do uh, to their audit standards, if I understood my role on the audit committee correctly. Uh, thank you, Chair Thompson. Uh, I think what I'm hearing from the question is how did the board get into a financial challenging state many, many years ago? It doesn't really have anything to do with counting beans and putting them in the right pocket. It has to do with spending more beans than what you actually have uh, is really what it comes down to. And that's where we work. We were spending more money on staff. We were spending more money on unused school space. Our school utilization, which I just mentioned, is 88%. We were down to 65% once upon a time. So in that 65%, we're providing uh, heating and all the utilities to that empty space. We're providing custodial services to that space and maintenance to that space. So that's a lot of money that's actually going out and not serving any students who are in that space. Um, so those are some of the reasons why we found ourselves um, in that predicament. And I would say that this is me looking backwards. I am not aware of what was actually happening at the time. I'm only aware of the steps we took to, to fix it. Thank you. Are there any other questions? through the chair supplementary. Yeah, so I, I did hear you say that we did improve consistency, uniformity, that if we used to have a school that was, you know, forty one percent empty, that we smoothed those uh those we smoothed those um lower or higher numbers. So uh fantastic. Hold up. Thank you. And again I just like to reinforce that the external auditors uh, follow their procedure and come in and do an audit on an annual basis of the financial statements and our team has done an excellent job and giving us uh, excellent advice to make decisions to put us in a good position that we're in today so thank you very much it was by trustee morgan and seconded by trustee atkinson that the Blue Water District School Board received the 2022-2023 Financial Statements Report and the 2022-2023 Consolidated Financial Statements for information. All in favor? Trustee Long? With gratitude, yes. Thank you. Um, next, we'll be looking for a mover and a seconder that the Blue Water District School Board approve the following banking resolutions for 2024. Um, general banking resolution certificate of officers and directors and the general borrowing resolution of 50 million. Uh, can I have a mover please? Trustee Johnstone, seconder, Trustee Loops. And go ahead, Superintendent Cummings. Thank you. And so with the advent of the uh, uh, inaugural meeting of the board, 
uh, it is upon us again to designate our signing authorities for our borrowing and banking information. And that is what is decided in front of you uh, for resolution to go forward. So we include the names of the chair and the vice chair and the uh, director of the Any questions or comments? It was moved by Trustee Johnstone, seconded by Trustee Luce that the Blue Water District School Board approve the following banking resolutions for 2024. The General Banking Resolution, the Certificate of Officers and Directors, and the General Borrowing Resolution of $50 million. All in favor? Trustee Long? Yep. Thank you. Uh, no correspondence has been received from the board tonight. So we're to communications and announcements. Are there any announcements that relate to public education? Trustee Johnstone? Yes, thank you. Um, so you would have received a, a trustee's um, minutes from my uh, OPSPA program meeting. Um, they, there was both the minutes to the meeting and also um, our, uh, our, our um, letter that went um, to the Ministry of Education on Accelerated Apprenticeship Pathways proposal. Um, I want to thank trustees who contributed um, to um, information for me to represent you at, uh, the, um, at uh, the program work team. And, um, and then I will, on the next item, I will add additional information from OPS. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? Uh, there out of district, are there any out of district meetings, conferences, or conventions to share? Trustee Johnson. Yes, so tomorrow is just a reminder that OFPA has a lunch and learn um, at noon, it's online. You, um, you would have received an email from OFPA if you wanna join in. If, this will be the third one, and it's been, it's just a continuation, um, and it's very, very good, and um, for, for trustees, and in terms of professional development. Um, also, just a reminder that PEZ, which is the Professional Education Symposium, is coming up, put on by OFPA, it's January 25th, 26th, you would have received an email. Now, there's a whole thing about actually um, filling out that information, and I believe Deb is going to be getting more additional information because when I filled it out the other day, when I got to the end, there's usually this opportunity that you know the corporation Blue Water can go online and pay, and this online form didn't allow it, so Bev is going to get that worked out. And the instructions will be sent to everyone. And we'll okay. time. Yeah. Just with respect to Pez. Um, it has been the practice of this board that anyone that's interested in attending the PES conference can uh, enroll and participate in that. Um, I'm taking advantage of making a comment and looking over at Superintendent Cummings because he will correct me if I'm wrong. There are other um, opportunities through the year for conferences and for those, please follow the process of uh, saying that you're interested and uh, getting permission. We don't have unlimited pockets, and it may get to a point that we have to uh, strategize how it's the most fair way for people to take advantage of things that they want to do. But for now, if you're interested in uh, attending PES, please uh, follow the instructions that Bev will be sending and, uh, and register. Okay, trusting. Quick clarification, does this mean there will be a different registration process than in the past for PEZ? That's right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, next, um, the, um, the Ontario Public School Board of Directors is this weekend, all day Sunday. I will be in Toronto. And that um, on the Monday is advocacy, Education Advocacy Day at Queen's Park, and that is all day mon Monday. And, um, and so um, we, we do have kind of what we're going to be talking to MPPs about, but I've also asked that Blue Water take um, the OMSPA template and blue, what we call Blue Water or ISIT, which means that make it relevant to basically Blue Water rewards <laughs> in terms of our priorities related to what the OMSPA priorities are. Um, I just wanted to mention that on November 4th, there was a Western Regional meeting. It was um, in um, conjunction with um, the Central West, Western Region. So the first part of the morning was a, a meeting, and then the afternoon.
governance workshop and it was on board self-assessment. It was excellent. Um, and, um, and I actually do have, I can, if you would like the electronic handout on that, I can send it, I can send it to you. And that's my report. Any other out of district convention meetings? Um, the trustee calendar of events has been provided for your uh, information and for those of you that are on a new committee, uh, you need to pay attention to those dates and as usual, if you see something that's missing or inaccurate, please bring that to our attention. And I am looking for a mover and seconder that the Blue Water District School Board adjourn at 851. Uh, yes, Trustee Ritchie and Trustee Long and safe home everyone.